Now, you wrote a book called What You Don't Learn in Film School, which is basically my entire brand. Uh, <laughs> what I've been... It's been a pleasure. No, it's been what I've been talking about for years. And it's like, right. guys, um, you know, one of the reasons why I started the podcast was like, I didn't hear anybody really out there at the time telling it how it is from a place of someone who's walked the walk, like being in the industry and really getting the shrapnel and getting the hell out, beat out of them. And, you know, 20, I mean, at the time I launched, I was, I was already like 18 to 20 years in you know, and just working with a ton of people and I've been, you know, and all sorts of craziness. And, um, and I wanted to give like a voice to like, no guys, this is not really what it is. So that's when I, when I found out your, about your book, I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta have Shane on. We gotta, we gotta talk. So what are your thoughts on film schools in general? Do you, do you need to go? <laughs> well, I think, you know, it's, it's a question that is the, the age, that's a $64,000 question. Um, I am not against film school. What I am against is charging people yes. six figures to get a degree in French noir cinema or, <laughs> you <Sorry>. know, film <laughs> yeah. theory and cell celluloid and how to keep it preserved in an archive. I mean, there are curriculum that I think are completely useless, but there are things there that I think are important. And I think, Absolutely. Alex, you know, like me, you're a blue collar guy. You, you know, if you, come on the set of my Jane Seymour film. If I wasn't working with Jane or my DP, I was physically unloading the grip truck and helping the guys set up. It's just who I am. Sure. But I think there's a lot of us who didn't have a parent who bought us a camcorder or we didn't grow up at a time when our phones could make movies or I, not everybody was lucky as me to grow up with moviolas and dads who were making documentaries. So if you don't have an understanding of the craft or have any idea about it, I think, you know, to become an architect, you would go to school to become an architect, to become a lawyer, you would do that. I think the most important thing somebody can do is read a book like the one I wrote or be involved with websites and movements like Indie Film Hustle because there is only so much they're gonna teach you at school. They have to keep the persona on that you do need this or they're without work. I mean, that's the way it is. Um, but there's so much the business of the business that they don't teach in school, as you know, uh, they don't teach about distribution deals. They don't talk <laughs> about how to hire a crew or how to make. I mean, I do all my own contracts, whether it's actors, Screen Actors Guild, IOTC, Teamsters. They don't teach that. Nope. So where are you going to learn it? You're going to learn it from guys like you and me and the other people out there that have that have you know, stood on a soapbox and try to, to promote it. So I think film schools are good. I get nervous where a lot of them. Their instructors are not tried and true filmmakers or people that that haven't been on a set in 20 or 30 years. I, I go around the country and do workshops and seminars. Well, now that we're on Zoom, I do them from here. But it amazes me the lack of credentials the teachers teaching our next generation of storytellers have. It's all just third generation stories about the history of cinema, and that's not filmmaking. No, I agree with you 100%. I, I again, I always tell people, look, if you can, if you can, if you have no understanding and you have no no other way to get this information, film school is wonderful at a price, at a at a price. Like my film school, I, I went to full sale and I paid eighteen thousand bucks. I know it well. I I, I paid eighteen thousand bucks in nineteen ninety something, and um, and it, for eighteen grand, it was a, it was well worth the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, because I learned how to rap. I, I, I'm sorry. Were you in Orlando? I was. Yeah, I was there for a year and a half. I was there in '93. I taught a, a workshop in '93 in Orlando. I don't know if you were there. I was. I was not there yet. I'm. A, I'm a little bit. A little bit older than you. A little bit. A little bit younger than. You, a little bit older than that. I'm not a little I'm bit 49. older than. You. I'm sorry. I'm 49. Well, sir. Well, no. I'm. I guess. Um. I, I'm. Uh, we're similar vintages. Let's say. Uh, we're similar vintages. <laughs> So, uh, but the thing is for that 18 grand, which I still think was a little bit pricey for my taste because uh, I learned how to wrap cable and I learned how to make a cup of coffee. And those were the two biggest takeaways from my film education because, because the technology was changing when I went. So oh, I was, yeah. I was learning, you know, I, I was, I was still told by my post-production professor that a computer will never be able to produce broadcast quality images. So oh, wow. yeah, that was a quote. I was like, wow. Okay. I believe yeah. Okay. So the big issue I have with film schools is that, yes, you have some great stuff in it, but the ROI is not there. 
You no. cannot charge somebody 60, 70, 80, 100, 120,000 dollars for an education that you and I both know will not return its investment. If you're going to be a doctor, there's a system set up to get you money back. If you're a if lawyer, you're a pilot. <laughs> if you're a pilot, if you're an architect, if you're any of these other, if you're an engineer, there are ways, there are systems set up for you to start. And it might take time. I'm not saying that doctors, they cost like, you know, 300, 300, $400,000 um, for their education. But there's systems in place to get that money back. Whereas in filmmaking, there is oh, absolutely man. nothing you can do to guarantee anything. And, and you and I both know that it will take, if you're good and lucky and you hustle like there's no tomorrow, maybe five years before you start generating enough money to support yourself if you live in Los Angeles. And that is like the outskirts. More likely 10 years. You, you couldn't you couldn't say it best and uh, better and and you know my whole thing when I started this I learned the hard way because you know I like you was trying to come up with a way where in between films what could I do to to make a living and also help others there's got to be a way because I tried to be a teacher I squeaked out of high school so nobody yeah. would hire me as a teacher because I didn't have a degree yes <laughs> so, okay fine um, I get it so how can I help and my whole thing is I was meeting with some of the top film institutions in the country. And I said, and I, I still am very close to a few of the chairs and they let me in on some very private stuff, but I would be under exaggerating if I said they know 86 to 92% of the kids who go through their full programs will never earn a dime in this industry. Absolutely. They know that. And my original approach, Alex was, what if because of the connections I have and my passion to help these students become, because they are our next generation of storytellers, my way of giving back, how about if we start a mentorship program their senior year so when they get out, we're almost handing them a baton. So people like Neil Moritz, people like Amy Powell, who was running Paramount at the time, could know these students and help place them and introduce them. And maybe once a year we can have a a, a, a gathering, you know, obviously before COVID at, a, at an arena or something where there's a lot of film people and a lot of students that can just make connections. No, nobody wanted to do it. No, they, and don't, it, they didn't want to do it. No, and there's, and look, they're selling the sizzle, man. They're not selling the steak. And that's, that, but that's the that's the thing. They have to sell the dream. Hollywood needs to keep this dream alive where if you go to film school, and, and by the way, before that was the truth, which was you had to go to film school to get the kind of education you needed to get even a job in the industry in the 70s. That's true. In the 80s. There was no other option where now there's guys like you and me out there talking, writing books, doing podcasts, right. YouTube channels. There's so much information out there that you don't need to. And I know a lot of filmmakers – who decided, you know what, I got $50,000 for an education, I'm just gonna go make a movie. And they learned so much more by just going out and making a movie, which might be good or bad regardless, it's an education. I promise you, if you go make a movie, it's an education. You will you will learn more making a movie, whether it's a short or a full length, as you know, you've made more than I. I go away, well, I think it's safe to say in the last 18 months, our world has been to quite a bit. <laughs> I've been in my studio for the last 18 months working on Break Even, which comes out later this year. So to be honest with you, I kind of know what's going on, but I can't wait to get back on a set schooled and reminded where we really are. I use those as I, such learning curves for me because I go in and I'm like, okay, this is where we are today. And it's it keeps me on my game. It's an exciting experience. And every time I do something, I learn. I no. Learn. No, without without question. Every single time I'm on a set, every single time I, I, I do, you know, in post-production, every time you're writing a script, you learn more and more. It's it's like anything else. You you got to learn the craft and every part of our craft. And it's so complex. It's not just writing a song. It's not just playing uh, an instrument. It's not just carving a table out of some wood. You're right. It's multiple di uh, disciplines that you need to understand at least if you don't have to do them all, but you should understand this entire process, which is massive. It is it is a complex art form. It, it, and, and we haven't even talked about the business. 
that's just the art form. Then the business is a whole other conversation. And there's a business side. You're right. You've got to go hustle your your money to get attached to the project, to get the actors, to sign them up, to get the project going. And then you got to crew it and cast it and location it and feed it and make it and then sell it. It's a process. And then do it all again. <laughs> and, it, do it all again. and it doesn't, and it doesn't generally, <laughs> generally speaking, doesn't work out exactly how you have planned, whether the positive or in the negative, it's always something else. Oh, and, yeah. and uh, it will break your heart more oh. times than not. It's it, this is a horrible relationship. This industry we have with it. It's an abusive relationship. It's an it's absolutely, toxic. it's a toxic abusive relationship. It, it is so well said. It's toxic. But, but it with that said, we can't quit crazy. <laughs> we can't. We can't quit it. <laughs> like I it's, need. It's that. It's that broke back. Now I just can't quit you, right? I can't quit you, man. <laughs> it's the truth. It's it's the truth. You can't You're quit right. because you know I've been saying this for a while. It's kind of like you catch it. You catch yeah. it, and it's with you for life. You can't get rid of it. It flares up sometimes. It goes dormant for decades even sometimes. But it. Oh, I literally had a conversation with a filmmaker the other day who was 65, just retired, and said, hey, I'm starting to write my screenplay because I've always wanted to make a movie. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that is the case. It's, got, it's flaring up. It's flaring up <laughs> now. <laughs> symptoms are coming. That's- well, you know, it's funny. I had, I've had a good run. If I, if I dropped dead tomorrow or was told I'd never make another movie, I'd be sad, but I've, I fought the fight. I won some battles. I'm proud of my body of work. And I, I, checked some boxes. I feel blessed, but what I wanted to Alex and I wanted to just become a workshop guy and a seminar guy and a mentor to these film students. I was done. I said, you know, if I don't make another, make another movie again, I'll be fine want to teach i've done my I, I fought the fight my resume is there and now i want to go teach and i i did that for i was six months in and i still love teaching and mentoring and workshopping i do it a few days a week now but i couldn't wait to get back on a set i missed my crew i missed fighting oh. with a writer i missed arguing <laughs> with a dp and fighting with an actor and being told i don't know shit and you know the hell with you and having them storm off and all that fun stuff that actors do when they know they're wrong and um I missed it. I missed being in the edit bay going, why didn't I get that extra angle? God dang it. Why are we got to make it work anyway? You know, I missed that. I, I just um, can't quit you. I just can't, I can't quit, quit you. I'm stealing that.